The way we make things is changing, radically. A new set of ideas and trends have emerged and combined to create a new industrial revolution, one led by people and human innovation. They're using ideas like collaborative design teams and leaner, more customizable manufacturing. Once upon a time, a factory made one thing. Now, a factory can make almost as many things as there are people to imagine them. From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. The South African Nuclear Energy Corporation, better known as Nexa, is working on two new products to treat cancer. Keith Campbell reports. The two radiopharmaceuticals are 195M Platinum Cisplatin and Glucab. 195M Platinum Cisplatin has been developed in partnership with the Australian Nuclear Science and Technology Organisation. Nexa Technology Transfer Intellectual Property Analyst Tandokari Kuma tells us about the 195M Platinum Cisplatin project. Nexa is, is, is also in the business of in the health sector, specifically in radio pharmaceuticals. So basically, cisplatin is a drug used to in the treatment of cancer, specifically your cancer, uh, your liver cancer, cervical cancer. So now there is a problem in terms of dosage. If you give a low dosage or a high dosage, the, the, the chemotherapy drug is not in, in effective. So now what we have done at Nexa, we have coupled uh, the, the drug with a, a radioisotope. So the radioisotopes helps in, 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 in checking that the, 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 the dosage is, is good and is at an optimum rate. So it works as a trace element, it works also in seeing the targeting. So it gives you the exact dosage that you are supposed to give, you are supposed to, give to, to a patient. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a companion treatment where you have the radioisotope, you have the, the, the pharmaceutical drug, and you combine them both, and then it gives optimum t uh, treatment and dosage to a patient. We are now, when we talk about, in the space of innovation, we talk about technology readiness levels. We are at a stage where we have done phase zero, zero trials. Normally in the pharmaceutical in, uh, industry, you start at uh, on animals, uh, like you use your mice. And then from your mice, once it's positive, you go to your humans, first in humans. So we've done phase zero of humans and they've been positive, meaning that the drug is good and it can work and it has shown improvements over than what is already in the market. So there are benefits to it. Uh, so now we're going to phase one and phase two. Because of the regulation uh, in, the, in the pharmaceutical space, we have to go through a series of clinical trials, but the drug itself has quite, uh, the, the, the project itself has has quite advanced. It's 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 suitable in hum in humans, but because of regulations, we have to further do other uh, 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 trials to for it to pass at the FDA, and it can be on the shelves. The second product being developed is called GlueCab. Nexa Technology Transfer Office Head Jonas Hanakom tells us about it. It's a novel application. We are sharing. We have co-developed the technology with the University of Cape Town UCT, and it's a novel approach to combine um, various effects to have a, a unique end result um, as a result. Uh, we are combining the EPR effect and that is uh, in the enhanced permeability and retention effect. Uh, that is used, uh, as you know, cancer cells grow very fast and uh, in doing so the supply network to it is not uh, well done. So you have the roads to it or the, uh, the arteries, the delivery systems to it, to it, uh, to it is not very well developed. Uh, you have big, um, let's call it holes in arteries. So we use these um, big holes for, uh, uh, to uh, send in vehicles with a certain size. So you, have a, you attach a big molecule to your, um, your system and it, it goes into the uh, cancer tumor cells and um, it cannot get out because it's uh, so it's it it, it, it um, is captured inside that uh, um, uh, tumor growth, and it can't get out. And once it's in there, so, so that was stage one of your system to get uh, the vehicle there. In your part of your vehicle, you also send in your so-called soldiers. So the second stage of this um, technology is to have a. Um, uh, radionuclides uh, delivering 
radiation to the bad guys, to the to the position where you are uh, now, which which you have achieved uh, by using a subsystem of stage one. So you now uh, attach the um, the subsystem of your uh, bigger molecule to the receptors of the cancer cells and you deliver a, a dose of radiation exactly where you want it. So you don't, um, you don't radiate healthy tissue, you only radiate uh, the bad tissue. Other news making headlines this week, Transnet announces 13 billion rand in US and Canadian development finance support for its South African locomotives purchase. State-owned freight logistics group Transnet has confirmed that it's received the backing of leading American and Canadian development funding agencies for its purchase of more than 500 diesel and electric locomotives. Today we are concluding a combined 13 billion rand funding raised in two agreements with various funders and financial institutions from Canada, the United States of America and South Africa. The funding is specifically for the Bombardier and GE portions of the 1064 locomotive acquisition program. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.